my beauties. I'm sure you're probably getting tired of this look with some of the latest videos, but I fear may as well go ahead and get them recorded and I can put them up whenever. Um, been having a little problems with my health. Um, that I'm trying to attend to. Um, first, I do want to give a shout out to Aunt Jackie's Don't Shrink Flaxseed Gel. Okay, for anyone with curly hair, naturally curly, or a lot of frizz, I highly recommend this product. Because, I mean, as you can see, not stiff at all this is just a wash my hair put the gel in shook it out a little bit and it dried okay this is my curl everyone else in the family poker straight hair if I didn't look so much like my sister and my father might be wondering because, you know, my mom, my sis, my grand, my aunts, everybody, straight hair. Mine gets curlier as I get older. And if I'm anywhere near salt water, oh man, it's tight coils. Anyway, now that that's done. Um, and also sometimes if it, you know, from sleeping... Uh, you know, one of the strands might look a little frizzy. Spray it with some water. Crunch it up and go. There go my babies. Hang on. Okay, I'm back. Anybody else trying to quit smoking? Because if you are, I could use a support group because I'm starting to feel myself getting a little bitchy. Sorry, but I am, because I'm trying to quit. I need to quit. Okay. So, for another history lesson, JFK, I've always been enthralled. Probably about the only conspiracy theory I have ever signed into. Um, I just don't believe in the single shot that did it. That's just me. And a lot of other people. Anyway, I came across some, some really interesting facts. Some of them I didn't know. Um, such as he received last rites four times. In 1947, he got sick traveling in the UK, and that's when he was diagnosed with the Addison's. He was given less rights. 1951, he had an extremely high fever in Japan. Read less rights. In 1954, he slipped into a coma after a back surgery read his last rites. And then, of course, when he was assassinated in 1963. Bonus, if anybody knows the date, without looking it up. Um, he used his father's influence to get into the Navy because he couldn't pass the medical. So, the family doctor forged a false certificate of good health and his father kind of convinced some officials in the Navy to accept that and let him in. Um, only president to receive a Purple Heart. He was wounded in action in August of 1943. He also won a Pulitzer Prize in 5-7 for his book Profiles and Courage. And he and Jackie actually had four children. 
I, I knew about the miscarriage. Um, you know, because obviously they had Caroline and JFK Jr. And then she had a miscarriage shortly before his assassination. And they named him Patrick Bouvier Kennedy. Um, he was born five weeks early and lived for like two days. And she was just forcing herself out of her depression by going on the trip to him to Dallas. Um, but they also had a daughter in 1956 that was born stillborn. And they uh, said that they planned to name her Arabella. I don't know if they actually did name her that or went with something else. Um, the bodies of the two kids were moved to from Massachusetts to Arlington to be near JFK when he was buried there. Um, in 1958, he got into a fender bender with Larry King in Palm Beach. And at the time, you know, he wasn't a presidential candidate, but he was in, in Congress. And he basically gave Larry King the riot act. He's like, I was parked. Why did you hit me? And, um, you know, King just apologized profusely and um, had promised to vote and have all his family vote for him. And that kind of softened JFK up a bit. Um, and he didn't expect Johnson to accept being his vice president. And when Johnson did accept, because it was all just a big political game, and um, it came down to the last day of being able to say who your running mate is. And um, when Johnson did accept, he looked at Bobby and he was like, what do we do now? So, Bobby went back to Johnson to try to talk him out of it. And then around like 4 p.m. that day, uh, JFK called Johnson and said, pay no mind to Bobby, he's out of the loop. You know, I do want you to be my running mate. And it was known they really didn't get along well. Um, he was the last president to wear a top hat at his inauguration. It was a tradition that started with Garfield in 1886 that each president kind of decked out and wore a top hat. JFK was not fond of him but he did it out of tradition and ended up being the last president to have done so. After that, none of them, tradition or not, bothered. Um, he did start a tradition at the, for the inaugural of having an inaugural poet. And he chose um, Frost, Robert Frost, and he wanted the him to recite the gift outright. Frost had a different idea, and so he wrote an, a different poem called Dedication, but it was a really bright sunny day, and he really couldn't see his papers, so he ended up doing the gift outright by memory. 
uh, up until recent, he was the wealthiest president we had. Um, when Trump was elected, he then became the wealthiest president and put JFK in the second place with it. Um, JFK had also donated his salary to charity. And he loved animals. And, you know, I, I knew just from reading about the Kennedy family, you know, they were always around animals and sports and outdoors and things of that nature. What I didn't know was JFK practically turned the White House into a zoo. Um, and another interesting fact that's not in with all this, I'll tell you in a moment, but he had five horses, two parakeets, two hamsters, a cat, a rabbit, five dogs, including Pushinka, a gift from Nikita Krush Khrushchev. Pashinka was descended from Strunka, one of the first dogs in space. So that was kind of neat. Um, but an interesting fact about the White House. JFK, due to a lot of his health problems, his back and the Addisons and everything. <coughs> Pardon me. Had a pool put in and then promptly would have interns summoned to swim with him um, of which they decided to put up some high walls blocking the pool from photographers but a lot of photographers respected privacy at that time and you know what a president did privately and it didn't affect the, the office, you know, because he was known as quite the womanizer. And I think it was Nixon that had the pool taken out. Um, I don't remember. It could have been Ford. One of them, you know, one in, in too long. Um. And this I found interesting. He was a speed reader. The average person reads about 250 to 300 words a minute. He read at 1200 words per minute. I mean, that is just amazing. And to be able to do that and still comprehend. Um, in the day before signing the Cuba embargo, he had an affinity for Cuban cigars. And so he had his press secretary, Salinger, he said, how quickly can you get the cigars? And he's like, you know, I want 1K of the cigars. He says I can have them by morning. The next morning, he asked Salinger, he's like, you know, did you get them? And he's like, I got you 1,200. He immediately pulled the paperwork out of his desk, signed the embargo. No more Cuban cigars. That was a pretty dirty trick, you know. And, and to think, a lot of of what goes on in the White House. Nowadays, we criticize left and right. It's just, oh, the world's gonna end. But if you think back to some of these other presidents and what they did, you know, like Kennedy signing that embargo right after he made sure he had his cigars. Um, you know, and, and Johnson, talk about a foul mouth. Ooh. Um, 
considerably so. He would intentionally try to embarrass interns by just going into the bathroom, leaving the door open, and conducting business twice. And I just think it's hysterical some of the things that were like, it's, it's so wrong. The, the things that a lot of the other presidents did in the White House, it's comical. I might have to do a video on things like that just to, to kind of put it out there and, and show just how um, and then Frank Sinatra he had so much pull and clout and power but not enough to get the, the Manchurian candidate produced and made so he convinced JFK to lean on uh, what is it United Artists um, yeah to lean on the United Artists heads to get it done and had he not done that the Manchurian candidate would have never been made um, despite Sinatra's power. He was the target of at least four assassination attempts. Um, including one in 1960, right after he was elected. Because um, a lot of people objected to his election simply because he was Catholic. And Joe Kennedy didn't exactly have a stellar reputation, even though he had once been an ambassador and the Kennedy family having all this political clout. In fact, he didn't even want JFK to be president. He was grooming Joe Jr. for that until he was killed in the war. And then JFK stepped up to do it, and then Bobby was to follow, and then Ted, well... Bobby got assassinated during his run and then Ted had Chappaquiddick happen and that kind of killed his chances um, you know for the ways that he handled the whole situation um, but shortly after the election a postal worker um filled his car with dynamite and followed JFK from Hyannisport to Palm Beach. Um, nothing ended up happening, but nonetheless, um, there were plots in Chicago and Tampa before ultimately Dallas. <laughs> Part of the reason that I don't buy into the whole um, uh, my mind just went blank and some of you that know history or this particular case are probably screaming at me right now Oswald boom Thank you to whoever said it loud enough. Um, I don't really buy into the whole Lee Harvey Oswald being the one. I truly believe he was a patsy. Um, you know, one, Jack Ruby wasn't exactly a patriot. Had a lot of mob ties. So why did he feel it was necessary to kill Oswald in front of all these cops in the police station? before Oswald really had a chance to talk. 
I just find that, you know, and, um, you know, studying the Zapruder film and seeing, you know, the, the initial one did come from behind because it was kind of thrown forward. And that's the one that got him in the, kind of come up the back and into the neck area. And it's possible the acceleration theory is what threw him back, but I believe that was another bullet coming from a different direction. Because it's almost like, you know, when you watch the Zapruder film, which we know has not been tampered with, there is a, a spot that you can't see because of a sign, but JFK comes forward like this, and then almost immediately back. And then he slumps over um, into Jackie's lap, in which she was not trying to escape. She was trying to retrieve a piece of a skull from the back of the car. Um, it just seems too quick because it, it wasn't until You know, you kind of heard pop, pop, pop. And it was pretty quick. That's when you see the car start to accelerate. So, that's just my own theory. And it's been, been stated that his last words were, my God, I've been hit. First off, the way he was hit, he couldn't have said anything. Um, Nellie Connolly, who was the governor's wife, had said, you certainly can say the people haven't given you a nice welcome. And he said, no, you certainly can't. And that's actually what his last words were. And that concludes the JFK. But I don't think anyone will ever know the full truth of what happened. Um, you know, just as, as good of a shot as Oswald was. And he was. He was a marksman. where he was at, his sniper's nest, so to speak, and the obstructions that were in the way, where the car was, it was a moving target. Um, and for the bullet to have such a velocity to go through Kennedy, through the seat, into Connolly, And hit Connolly a few times because um, it came through, I believe, it was his shoulder, hit his wrist, and his leg. One bullet going through two bodies and a seat. I don't have extensive knowledge of guns, but I do know that the odds of the bullet coming through and let's say for instance it didn't hit any bone just soft tissue the seat should have slowed it down enough to where the bullet should have stayed in Connolly if it struck him not exit hit his wrist and his leg. And it certainly wouldn't be in a pristine condition like they showed it was. So, I'm not, you know, one of those tinfoil hats that's going to sit there and say that it was definitely the government that did this. 
I don't know. I just don't think Oswald was necessarily the one. If he did get a shot off and hit JFK, I truly believe it was just the one shot. Not the other shots that all the witnesses said they heard. They weren't under the underpass, so there wasn't the reverberation factor. Can be mistaken as to what direction, but you're not going to be mistaken on the pop, pop, pop. And sadly, the only film we have is the Sapruder. And you have that, that blocking. But it only blocks it for like a couple of frames. It's not like it's severely blocked. And... I don't know. I just don't think we'll ever, ever know. And with that, I end this one. Buy my beauties. And don't forget the giveaway. If you liked what you saw, ring the bell, mash the thumbs up, leave me a comment.